Hey guys, I hope you're all doing good. In this video, you are going to learn how to solve a second order differential equation using programming. ODEs are extremely important in engineering. They describe a lot of important phenomenon and solving those ODEs can actually help us understand these systems. So a couple of examples that involve a second order ODE include uh, a simple pendulum. So for example, let me just draw a pendulum here. All right, so for example, in this case, this is the angle theta. All right, so if I solve this particular equation, I'm basically solving for this theta and also the rate at which the theta value is changing with respect to time, which is nothing but the velocity. So in addition to this, the same pendulum also describes the motion of a spring mass and damper system. So if you know, for example, if I have a damper like this, a spring like this and a mass like this all right and if i give this mass the initial condition then this same ode can be used to describe how that mass is going to move this has a lot of application you know in vehicle dynamics where the suspension system can be modeled as a set of mass springs and dampers and you can actually solve the ode and figure out how you know your vehicle dynamics is going to be all right so the fundamental idea behind solving ODEs, both analytically and computationally, is when you have a higher order ODE, then you break it down into a set of first order ODEs. So the first thing that you will notice here is this is actually a second order ODE, right? Now the reason why it's second order is because you have this exponent 2 here. If it's a first order ODE, then you will just have d theta by dt. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that theta is equal to theta 1. Okay. If theta equal to theta 1, then d theta by dt is nothing but d theta 1 by dt. And I'm going to introduce a new variable called theta 2. Okay, so once I have that, I'm going to say that, you know, d square theta by dt square, right? right? This is going to be equal to d square theta 1 by dt square, because theta is equal to theta 1. And this is nothing but d by dt of d theta 1 by dt and this is nothing but d by dt of theta 2 right so there is a reason why we are doing this transformation and it will make sense in a second okay so let's call this as relation number one and relation number two and if we go back to our original ode which is nothing but d square theta by dt square plus b by m multiplied by d theta by dt plus g by l sine theta equal to zero. All right, so let us say theta is equal to theta one. So the transformation continues. All right. So now what I can do is instead of d square theta one by dt square, you know, I can say d theta two by dt plus b by m d theta one by dt is nothing but theta two. Again, this is from equation number one plus g by l sine theta one equal to zero. So in other words, to solve this original second order ODE, what I've done is I've created two ODEs. I've created a first ODE, which is d theta one by dt is equal to theta two. And the second ODE is d theta two by dt is equal to minus b by m theta two minus g by l sine theta one. All right, so this is what I meant as breaking down a second order ODE into a series of first order ODEs. And that is why we did this transformation. Hopefully that's clear. So the idea is if you have a third order ODE, then you can break it down into a system of three first order ODEs. Okay, so then what we are going to do is we are going to say that, you know, D by DT of theta one and theta two, we are just writing that in uh, so we are just writing the equations down in matrix form and this is going to be equal to 
theta 2 in the first case minus b by m theta 2 minus g by l sine theta all right now this right here is our solution vector i'm calling it as a solution vector because it contains two quantities okay so you can just call this entire thing as theta so now i'm going to represent the left hand side as theta all right and there's a reason for doing this i'll explain this later so now when we're trying to solve it using programming you know it can be any of the ode solvers either through matlab or python we need to provide the equations in this particular format and that is what we're going to be looking at next okay all right so we are going to start programming this in uh, matlab as you can see i already have the program here so i'm just going to explain this most of the commands should be quite familiar to you and uh, you know take a look at it and then uh, work on the assignment problem that has been provided on the leaderboard interface all right so i'm starting with clear all close all clc hopefully at this point you know what these commands do and then i'm defining my inputs so so b is the damping coefficient g is gravity l is the length of the pendulum and m is the mass all right and then i define the initial conditions now remember we are solving a ode system right and there are two first order odes one for uh, velocity and another for displacement correct so when you solve the first ode you need to provide initial conditions for the displacement so here we are saying that the initial displacement of the pendulum is zero and the initial velocity is five meter per second and then we are going to be integrating the ODE system to obtain a solution and for which we need to define the value for time. So I'm saying that T span is my time array. It goes from zero to 10 seconds with 500 values in between. All right. So then what we have to do is we have to call our ODE function. So here uh, the syntax is a bit hard to digest, but let me try my best to explain it. So ODE 45 is an inbuilt solver in MATLAB. So we'd first type that name and then in general, our ODE, right, we are basically um, saying that its main inputs are T and theta. There's a bunch of other constants, but theta and T are the dependent and independent variables of our ODE system. So we are saying that our ODE is function of T comma theta, and then we are defining our function. So ODE underscore func is T comma theta followed by b g l and m so these are the input parameters that we will be passing and after that we provide the initial conditions and after that we provide the integration and after that we provide the time array which basically says how far the integration needs to be done and then the initial conditions corresponding to the starting of your time all right now this might be a bit confusing so let me repeat it again so here you first define your ODE is a function of t and theta, and then you basically say how your ODE function is defined. All right, so ODE underscore FUNC, what is that? Well, that's nothing but a separate MATLAB program that we have written. See that? It's called as ODE underscore func. So the same name is given, and its input arguments are t, the time, theta, b g l and m so you can see that that's exactly what i have here so this is nothing but our ode function definition all right and then inside that what i'm doing is i'm defining theta 1 and theta 2 so if you remember theta is our solution array right so when we did the derivation i basically clubbed theta 1 and theta 2 into a variable called theta so the first value theta of 1 is going to be theta 1 and theta of 2 is going to be theta 2 which is what I've defined in the first two statements and then we are defining our first ODE so for example line number 6 is our first ODE where we are saying d theta 1 underscore dt or which is nothing but d theta 1 by dt is theta 2 and our second ODE which is d theta 2 by dt is equal to minus b by m theta 2 minus g by l sine of theta and then we combine them and then we combine this into an array called as d theta underscore dt and then we just separate it and then we provide this as two rows okay so remember that i have a semicolon here which means that that's going to be a column matrix all right so this is very important if you don't have this then you might get an error okay and then finally this function right here is going to give me the time the integration time and the results now since we are solving two odes 
the results will be a column vector and to be specific it has two columns so if i open up my results so you can see that there are two columns the first column refers to my displacement and the second column refers to the velocity you can see that the displacement starts with zero which is consistent with the boundary conditions or the initial conditions that we provided and when you take velocity it starts with phi all right so let me close this and then i'm going to run this case so if you run it you can see that you have two curves the first curve represents your displacement and your second curve represents your velocity the way i'm able to tell this is you can see that displacement starts at zero and velocity starts at five meter per second okay so once you have this baseline code you can just keep changing your parameters for example i'm going to change my damping coefficient and you can see that the oscillations are not being damped that much i can also increase it by a factor of 10 and i can damp out the vibrations very quickly so you can see that we have written a very useful code you can solve any second order ODEs that you want and you can apply the same concepts to solve higher order ODEs as well all right so i hope you found this video useful and you will be able to do the assignment that's provided good luck all the best bye